Right. Um, Robinson's Bay Ratepayers and Residents Association and Lee Robinson combined with Robinson's Bay Reserve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we just asked that the two submissions be heard together because they're basically linked. Yep. And I think uh, there is an overhead, and I think the preferable way would be to hear from the Domain uh, Reserve Committee first, uh, Sir Richard Lovett, and then I can follow from that submission. We should not need the full 20 minutes for the... Lovely. Thank you. <coughs> uh, do we have our PowerPoint? Who's... <coughs> yes. Who's in charge? <laughs> you bought it? Did you bring it in? I emailed it, it yesterday. Was it was supposed to be good to go. We were asked to email it in. <laughs> After four phone calls, I was assured it was here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great when it works. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Sue Lovett, the Secretary Treasurer for the Robinsons Bay Reserve Association, and Richard Lovett, the Chair, and Lee is also on the committee and he's representing the Ratepayers Association. Uh, Robinsons Bay is situated at the north end of Akaroa Harbour between Devotional and Takamatua. The School Road Reserve, the Green Star, the Old Post Office, the Red Star, and the Blue Star, the Wharf, are all within easy walking distance of each other. The Reserve Management Committee is responsible for the Reserve, the Post Office, and previously until amalgamation for the Wharf. The Bay contributed significantly to the building of Canterbury. And the story of the saw milling, the Coxfit seeding, the dairy and farming is being told through the Reserve on School Road and a series of clearings along the bushwalk representing the various activities and for some reason the text that was on there has disappeared. The current wharf... No, oh, OK, we're coming up one at a time. <laughs> Sorry. The current wharf was constructed from materials from other wharves owned by businessmen in the bay. It was repaired in 2004 by a community using donated materials and labour. There's something drastically wrong with this powerful. Um, build timber from trees planted by the Domain Board in the 1950s and local fundraising. A major fundraiser in 2004, led by Dame Ann Herkes, who you will see in the middle of that group of people on the wharf, combined with donations and labour, funded significant repairs to the wharf and the access road. Many locals and batch owners were involved, and there is a huge amount of goodwill from past and present property owners. <coughs> the council have done a, a beautiful job of depicting the old schoolhouse on the reserve, and there'll be a photo of that coming up. However, we still have the original wharf, and it's part of our story. And rather than having a depiction of it as part of the story of the bay, it's preferable to maintain the structure itself especially as it's such a popular asset. The wharf and the reserve are used as recreational areas for the community and gatherings. 
and this is the depiction of the old schoolhouse. Council expertise in elements such as steps that are required to conform to standards has been invaluable, and the committee's delighted with the schoolhouse, the signage and the steps. Since 2000, the Robinsons Bay Reserve Management Committee has replaced the boundary fences, removed a large number of exotic trees, funded and consulted with Lucas and Associates' drawing of the concept plans, retrieved the old school bell, and installed items such as old gate catches and picket fencing donated by the locals, worked with the council on the signage, the steps and the schoolhouse. In the budget for the reserve, 39,000 has been estimated for the design and location drawings for a car park and a further 111,000 for the construction of the car park. We believe that by consulting with locals and making use of local labour, equipment and expertise, a suitable end result could be achieved for a fraction of the cost, allowing the remainder of the funds to be used for repairs to the wharf. Council could be best employed in determining compliance with any relevant regulations. And there is currently a car park being used by locals on the opposite side of the road um, to School Road at present. Working bees have been well supported in the past, with community picnics being held annually up until 2011. It's envisaged that now the preoccupation with earthquake repairs is diminishing, we can re-engage the wider community with the reserve and the wall. Take that one, sorry. Um, and this is already apparent in the numbers attending the meetings and the support being shown, including at a tree planting last spring, where three families of the current and past generations um, were involved in, in planting trees. So to reiterate what the previous speaker said, we don't need our car park over-engineered, please. Um, we respectfully suggest to Council that between the Reserve Management Committee and the Ratepayers Association, there's sufficient experience, expertise and goodwill to achieve a much greater bang for the buck than currently proposed in the budget. It seems somewhat ludicrous to fund Neighbourhood Week activities so people can get to know each other when there are projects such as the Wharf and the Reserve which have always fulfilled this role and with sufficient funding will continue to do so while maintaining significant community assets for residents and visitors to enjoy. Thank you. So, Councillor, if I could just speak to that. Um, you've heard the Council has provided significant funds over the last 15 years to the Reserve Management Committee, uh, and a magnificent job has been done to depict the history of the Bay in terms of the old reserve and, or the reserve and the old school site. Um, but part of the history of the bay is the wharf. The wharf was the domain for uh, exporting product, as you've heard, uh, and it is the place where people actually are drawn to. Probably 80% of the visitors to the wharf over, the, over any yearly period are visitors to the area. Um, and with the linkage to the domain, to the reserve, with appropriate signage that's been, that has been budgeted for in the current plan, we believe that will bring the whole thing together. But we also believe that, you know, there is a there is a six to eight metre berm at the bottom of School Road, which is used for by the school buses to for children to alight. Uh, they don't need to cross the main road. Uh, with a bit of uh, ingenuity, sanding or shingling uh, top course, that, that could be an adequate car park at the moment. Buses do not go there because the reserve is not adequately signed. Um, it would be with signs below it and at the wharf. Um, there would be adequate room for car parking in the area and with the 80 families in Robinson's Bay, <coughs> many of whom are holiday makers but have permanent residence there, um, there, there are engineers, there are construction people, there are people in, um, for example, um, one, one of the owners is a Mitre 10 owner, there's another Hampton's ITM owner, they are all willing to provide materials and expertise and to provide <coughs> certifications to the council that comply with the standards required. And I'm given to believe the same thing at the moment is happening with the Church Bay Wharf under the auspices of the council. So the community is very keen to provide its expertise to reduce the cost, spread the load and ensure that all these provisions are 
maintained for the benefit not only of this local community, but for the benefit of the peninsula and for the benefit of Christchurch visitors. I mean, the peninsula is the playground for the city, and we're very keen to see it's maintained. And uh, these infrastructures that are deteriorating uh, can't, we believe, be let go, and we're very supportive as a community of assisting and being part of a joint venture with the council to make sure that they are maintained. <clears throat> Great. Um, are there questions? Uh, Andrew. So. so just to um, make sure I've got this right, this isn't asking for any more money. This is just asking for flexibility around the way that the car park for the <coughs> reserve is delivered, particularly using local expertise and, and professional input and volunteers and so on. Um, and then to use the surplus funds that are left because of that local volunteer input to repair the wharf, to go towards the repairs on the wharf. And I, I note that you mentioned um, 80 families, and I note in here there were 72 submissions in favour of the wharf being repaired. So, I mean, that's an uh, overwhelming majority of um, people in, in Robinson's Bay that are supportive of that. So the, the, no extra money required. It's just really asking for some flexibility to run the two yep. projects side by side. We're certainly not seeking any more money, and um, we believe that... I mean, we believe the priority should be in terms of in terms of finishing the project that the car park should be should be proceeded with um, and we believe that can be done expeditiously and under the right um, authorities within the bay to satisfy the councils of, of the various requirements but we believe with proper management of that budget um, the remaining funds could be put towards some significant repairs required for the wharf that is di that are difficult in terms of piling uh, for the community to do on its own bed. Phil. <coughs> oh. Um, so you, you're also clearly saying that there'd be a good, a good deal of local community input um, in terms of volu voluntary work would go into the project too? That's what yes. One of the slides there shows the um, working of the, you wouldn't think so with the weather, it was actually the 30th of December, but it was very cold suddenly on the day. But uh, there, was, there was 40 people on the wharf that day replenishing the T part of the wharf at the top. Now, the 80 planks that were milled for that that uh, part of the wharf, eight metres each in length, were milled from trees on the road reserve just along the jetty road. And Anne Herk has found some minutes of a council meeting in 1933, <laughs> where uh, forensic though she is, um, <laughs> found those minutes. And they, they, they three locals, um, one of whom was responsible for building the wharf in 1914 sought and obtained permission from the council to grow a stand of macrocarpas on the road reserve for the future replenishment of the wharf. Wow. So it was a lot of foresight, really. And, and in 2004, we obtained the permission um, of the then Banks Peninsula Council to mill 11 of them, and a local sawmiller uh, then milled them, treated them, and we put them down, and they formed the tea part of the jetty that's there now. <clears throat> Brilliant. That's a fantastic story. And we want to continue that story because yeah. we love the place. Yeah. Paul Ames. So the council would have done an assessment of the wharf? Yes. And um, what are the, what's the value of the repairs in the council? Um, oh, probably between three or four hundred thousand dollars if it's done by local by contractors employed by the wharf. Okay. But we, we, um, Kevin Simcock is an engineer who lives in Takamatu. He's done a lot of work with the council. He's provided us a, a, a plan uh, which he believes he would certify uh, for the improvements. Um, we have already approached um, both Kinetics and the Harbour Board for top quality second-hand piles, which will be provided at minimal cost. Um, that Kevin has engineered a program to drive more piles down the outside of the existing piles. All oh, right. Um, and that can be done from the jetty. Is it all the piles? Or um, no, the, the, at the moment there's 11 that need replacing immediately, 17, another, another six are marginal. But we, we, in, in keeping with this whole thing, we would like to put in place a five year, five to ten year maintenance plan so that as things are required, we can do them and, um, and that we take on that responsibility and uh, provide the appropriate certifications to the council. So would you envisage that you would be working alongside some council staff at all? Or yes, staff? we've spoken, we've already spoken to Andrew Rutledge and had a meeting with him and Paul Devlin, I think it is, who is dealing with the Church Bay Wharf. We've spoken to him and he's, and we're in the process of putting together 
a labour and materials plan which we would put to the council and they would approve that in conjunction with the required certifications along the way from a licensed building practitioner and Kevin Simcock as engineer. Great, sounds like you've got it in hand. Uh, I'm just wondering, is, the, is this the kind of example of the sort of thing that we should be delegating to the local community board so that they could sign it off? I would almost suggest, I mean, a, a part of the, um, the, the group making the submission of the Reserve Management Committee, um, this is actually a, a really good example of the way things have been done on the peninsula for years Absolutely. in terms of the Reserve Management Committees. <laughs> we've talked about communities taking care of their own assets, and here we've got three motivated people representing 72 other motivated families um, that want to do exactly that thing. So whether it's for the community board or whether it's actually for the community through the Reserve mm. Management Committee right. um, is, is another question we'd probably want to consider. Yeah, but I mean, it's a, to me, it's just a, like a, a kind of no-brainer. We want more money and we want to build our community at the same time as preserving this wonderful... But I'd, um, I'd just, I'd, if I could just make one more point, um, Madam Chair, I mean, the, the GD has been closed for four years. Uh, yeah. There's been a gate across the front of it. And Christmas last, we had that magnificent summer and there were, you know, at any one time there'd be 10 or 12 cars pull up and couldn't get onto the wharf. Despite that, people were walking around the gate and handing kids around the gate in, in a rather unsafe manner. But a, a Samoan family turned up in a beat-up old car with about seven kids and fished off the road. It was probably the only day out for the year. Came over there, couldn't get on the jetty and fished in about a foot of water. Caught nothing. But, I mean, it is a community asset. Yeah. People who don't like the business of Akaroa come to these little bays and want to use the facilities that have been provided. <clears throat> yeah. If I could also add, you know, Lee's done a huge amount of work on that wharf. Richard and one of the other locals installed the culverts for the the access road and then council came along and gravelled that mm. after the repairs were done in 2004. So for it to just go now, yeah. there's a lot of work and a lot of effort yeah. and a lot of money has just gone. Yeah, no, we don't want that. We Definitely don't want <laughs> Very good. Well, look, thank you very much for your presentation and thanks for joining together and, and making it very meaningful as well. So we, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. That is the good thing about it coming here is we get to hear all these yeah. stories. So.